2 Peter chapter 3, the Bible says in verse number 1, it says, This second epistle, beloved, I now write unto you, in both which I stir up your pure minds by way of remembrance, that ye may be mindful of the words which were spoken before by the holy prophets, and of the commandment of us, the apostles of the Lord and Savior. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust. And we find out what these scoffers are going to say, and we'll, we'll give some attention to it in a moment. But in verse number 10, the Bible says, but the, day, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the, uh, the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things, notice this, these words, shall be dissolved. What manner of person ought ye be, uh, to be in all holy conversation and godliness? I want to talk to you just a little bit, and we're going to be in this entire passage as we go along, but for the sake of time, we won't read it all. We'll just kind of go through as we're uh, preaching a little while this morning. But I want to preach this subject to you, living below while looking above. Living below while looking above. Lord, I stand here this morning and I pray and I've asked you to help us and once again I want to ask you to help me be like the mule of Balaam I, help, I pray you'd help us to pray the message of God and we're nothing but just a fool uh, the foolishness of preaching to confound the wise oh God I pray that you'd help the preaching this morning to be that that would uh, impregnate our heart and turn us to you and help us this morning as say but I pray for that one that does not know you I pray God that hear the wonderful message of the good news and may they truly be born again this morning. We'll thank you for what you do. Lord we need you. I can't do this alone. It'll be nothing but tinkling symbol but I know that when the Holy Ghost of God is in it you'll do something that we cannot do and we're looking for that. We're looking to see Jesus this morning we pray in Jesus name. Amen and amen. You may be seated. I'm, I'm thinking here in our text uh, this morning and as I told you we're uh, going to discover living below while looking above. Here in our text, Peter is burdened for God's people and he gives purpose for his final words as, as it will be uh, for the Apostle Peter, this second uh, epistle that he has written to the church. And here's what he says to them. In essence, he says, I want to exhort you by stirring up your pure minds. We need a good stirring today. Somebody help me. We need a good stirring today. And I'm not here to just uh, preach that, but I'm here to say we need God to stir us again. Amen. We have lost uh, some things in our life. We've lost our excitement uh, for, the, uh, for the things of God, what He has done for us. Uh, many sit on the pews and they sit there and they are unmoved when they hear about the goodness of God. May God stir us up. We need to be stirred may I say this sometimes people are stirred by being shaken I've been to services where the preaching got on and man I'm telling you I felt like I got shaken up a little bit I sat there by the time I was done man I'm telling you what was settling began to rise back up in me and sometimes I'd raise my hand sometimes a tear would come down sometimes that have to bow my head in shame. But I'm saying, God stirred my heart. And we need God to stir us up again. We need Him to sh shake us. Let me say it this way. Sometimes you stir by sticking the stick in and moving it around. You say, what are you going to get on with that one? Sometimes we need the Word of God stuck in our oh, uh, settled heart and get that stick of the Word of God and to stir us around again and to help those things which have settled. Come on now. Don't sour up on me. I'm saying we need to get them stirred up again so we can be of use for the cause of Christ. So I'm saying he exhorts he says, I want to exhort you by stirring up. Now notice this, your pure minds. 
Now why do you say pure minds? Preacher said it. In fact, both preachers this morning have pretty much preached my whole message. All I'm doing is just reiterating what they've already said. Somebody say amen there. Amen. Uh, our pure minds, what are we speaking about? Well, here's what he's talking about. That, that, that pure, that word pure, you'll find it used in Matthew chapter number 5 and verse number 8. Here's what he said. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Oh, man, I'm about to have one of those Holy Ghost spells. What do you mean seeing God? Man, I come to church and when my heart and my mind's right, I see God. You say, well, wait a minute. You can't see him. Oh, don't get me started. You can't see him with a visible eye, but I tell you by the eye of faith, I can see him. Amen. As I heard this brother stand up and testify, I saw a little glimpse of God this morning. Now, some of you sit there and said, what's everybody getting excited about? I'll tell you what we're getting excited about. We're getting excited about seeing God this morning. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God and he says I, I, I exhort you I want to stir up your pure mind so what's he talking about without alloy without alloy preacher this morning said uh, the world hinders us the world wants to stop us from having Holy Ghost revival. Now, I know that word Holy Ghost scares a lot of people. It ought not. Amen. There's nothing wrong with that word Holy Ghost. Name Holy Ghost. Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost. Now one of the two uh, represents what God, the Holy Ghost of God does in our life. But I'm telling you, He's real this morning. Hey man, He's real. And, 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 and He said that the world wants to hinder that spirit of revival in us. Why? Because many times our minds are mixed up and are set and we are people who have been weakened. Think, think about it. What is alloy? What, what does it mean without alloy? Pardon me just a minute. What does it mean without alloy? Here's what it means. <clears throat> See, when you take metal that is good and strong and you want a piece of metal that would be easy to bend, a little more moldable, what do you do? You mix some other metals with that strong metal and therefore that strong metal becomes weakened. And what we have done, oh now don't sour up on me. What we've done in our life, hey, we've allowed the world to get mixed in our minds. We've allowed the world to get mixed in our hearts. We've allowed the world to get mixed in our ways. And so therefore, we don't have pure minds. And Peter said, here's what I want to do. I want to get you back to your pure mind. I want you to get back to that place where it's all about God. Where it's all about Him in your life. Without any alloy in your life without that mixture that causes you to be a weak need Christian he said I stir up your minds your pure minds so he exhorts them to be stirred up their pure minds but then uh, he says I want to encourage you by way of remembrance well, what do you mean well, we forget easy I come prepared to amen myself if I have to. <laughs> it just adds more length to the sermon. Amen. I said we're, we are prone to forget easy. See, we, we've forgotten about how the Holy Ghost of God convicted our heart and brought us to a place of repentance before Him. And how that the Lord reached way down. He didn't just reach down a little ways. He reached way down and lifted us up out of the mire, the muck and the mud. And He made something out of our life. Oh, I'm saying we've forgotten about what Jesus has done for us. Well, you know, preacher, I've just grown up and I've become a little more dignified. Can I just help you with something? Lose your dignity. Hey man, lose that dignity. The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hey man, are you redeemed this morning? Do you know him? Do you remember what he did for you? I'm saying, Peter says, I want to exhort. I want to encourage you. I want to help you by way of remembrance. I want to remind you of some things. So then Peter gets into our text and he begins to unravel, unfold some things for us. Now stay with me. It'll get a little negative, but I want to tell you glory's coming. Amen. Peter, Peter brings to our attention three truths. 
The first of these is these perilous days can be crushing in our life. Look at verse 15 and 16. You'll find out what I'm trying to say. Verse 15 and verse number 16. Look what it says. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. Now watch this. As also in all his epistles, speaking in them of things in which are some things hard to be understood, which they that are unlawful learn and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures under their own destruction. Here's what he's saying. He's saying some of these things that you're going to hear about are hard to really get a hold of. But if you'll listen God the Holy Ghost will help you get a hold of those things. And there's a lot of people who are wrestling with them in their flesh trying to get their minds wrapped around them but they can't understand them. What are you talking about as we look at this text? Stay with with me now. Please don't lose me here. Uh, as we look at this text, Peter is centering his attention about a day that is yet to come. It's a day when this world shall be dissolved. Well, there's some things that happen before that day takes place. Oh, listen to me. Hey, he's going to come again with all of his saints. But in order to come again, oh, honey, I'm going to get excited. Before he can come with all of his saints, he got to first come and get his saints. Hallelujah, he's coming again. While we're living below, we're looking above. We're looking for him that's coming from yonder in glory. He's going to come and take us back to be with himself. I'm saying he's coming again. So Peter is saying, hey, during these days, it's going to be difficult times. It's going to be discouraging times. It's going to be crushing times. Now as I look at our world in which we live, I have to say, Peter, you know what? It is kind of discouraging. Boys, sometimes it can crush you. You get to look at these weird people out here today that hate our country. Just well go ahead and come and say amen. Because I'm a red-blooded American through and through. Amen. I still believe the old red, white, and blue is wonderful. I still believe that those who fought, fought for our freedom are, are to be blessed, are to be honored, are to be preferred. Not their statues or these things destroyed, but we ought to be uh, glorifying God for what He's done in our country. And we look at the wickedness that abounds. Sometimes I'm telling you, it can crush you. You get to thinking, well... well he said he's coming, but, 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 but where is he? Can I just tell you, honey, he's coming. <laughs> he's a coming. Believe me, his word has not changed. He's coming. But it can be crushing as we get to looking at the events that we are looking at. Uh, man, I'm telling you, it's difficult days. But then watch this. Not only the truth of perilous days are crushing. And I'm trying to hurry through this introduction because I want to get to the message. Whew. He says not only is the perilous days are crushing, he says that payday is certain. See, all of these people, the thing you and I need to understand, all of these people who are rioting today, go ahead and say amen. All of these people are going to face a payday. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it may look like they're getting by now. It may look like they uh, can do whatever they want and that, man, harm could come to us. But believe you me, uh, paydays are coming. He says here there's a day of coming when God is going to take care of things. He's going to judge those people. He's going to deal with... Are you listening to me this morning? I'm saying, hey, payday, paydays are coming. And can I say, dear Christian friend, it's not just coming for the world. Payday is also coming for you and for me. We're going to stand before Him and give an account. So here we are living below while looking above. What should we do? Watch this. Here's some of the message. I want you to get a hold of this. What should we do? What should be our thoughts during this time? Since it is true that these days are perilous. Since it is true that uh, paydays are coming. What should we do? Number one, you had better be ready. Yeah. <laughs> 
I like that one all by myself. Because I got ready. Amen. January the 16th, 1985. I got ready. I got ready to go. I got ready for payday. I got ready for Jesus to come. Are you ready? You say, how do you see that here in this passage? Watch this. Verse number 1, verse number 8, verse number 14, and verse number 17. You see that Peter is talking to the beloved that would be saved people. If you're not one of the saved people, this message isn't for you. So you'd better get ready. Well, would Jesus accidentally come before I have a chance to get saved? The Lord is not slack concerning His promises, but is long-suffering and not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Jesus is standing. He's ready. Are you ready? Are you ready? We better get ready. See, today, you must see the sense of urgency. If there's ever a time that it was closer that Jesus is coming back than today, today's the day. Now, would you just get a hold of this? This, this is not shouting material, but this is good truth. Paul said, This know also, brethren, time short. Now, Paul wrote that way back under in A.D., I don't know, I think it was about uh, 63, 64. He wrote that down, said, all th- uh, that This know also, brethren, time is short. Here we are in 2020. I wonder how much closer it is for Jesus to come back. And I'm saying to you, dearly beloved, I'm saying, hey, don't get missed. Don't you miss out. Get born again. See the urgency. Well, what will happen? You'll die, you'll seal your fate, and go to a devil's hell. Right. Right. Would you look at me this morning? I'm going to be honest with you. Don't you say you leave this place this morning and that trump sounds, don't you say, well, you know, I never had a chance. Because you're getting a chance this morning. And I think if you've been around here, you had a lot of chances. You better see the urgency because there's coming a day. Are you listening to me? There's coming a day when there'll be no more mercy. There'll be no more chances. Well, preacher, you're scaring me. I'm not obligated to scare you. I'm obligated to give you the truth this morning. You'd better get saved or else sense or see sense the urgency sense the the urgency but get a hold of this you must see the simplicity now this is going to give me a conniption again what do you mean the simplicity I'm so glad that getting saved is not hard to do (laughs) I'm sure glad it's not like the Catholics want you to do I'm sure glad it's not like the Methodists want you to do if you if you if you if you oh no all I did just confess my sin believe on Jesus Christ I got born again you're talking about simplicity it's easy to settle your eternal destiny See the simplicity. Boy, we make it so hard today. Well, if I'll just work, if I'll just, uh, your works ain't going to get you there. Well, if I'll just go down and shake the preacher's hand, you're shaking the preacher's hand. Ain't going to get you there. He's a good man, but he's not God. Only God can forgive sins. And I'm here to tell you, if you just come and receive Jesus Christ, it is simple to be saved to be born again see Jesus said this to that uh, Pharisee who came to him at night he said we know that you're all this kind of stuff and Jesus looked at him and said I'm not impressed with your knowledge he said marvel not that I say unto thee ye must be born again (sighs) just that simple getting born again Oh, Nicodemus said, well, getting born again? Can I go in my mother's room a second time? Oh, come on, Nicodemus. You're not that stupid, are you? He said, marvel not that I say unto thee, ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound of the, uh, thereof, but canst not tell from whence it came and whither it goeth. He said unto him, he said, you've got to receive Jesus Christ. The Holy Ghost of God will convict your heart when he does sense the urgency and get in get saved 
Well, can I get saved on my own without the Holy Ghost? No, you can't. Only the Holy Ghost can draw you to be saved. Amen. But when He does the drawing, just get in. Amen. Now watch this. I'm going to give you three things. And I've really got to hurry. But boy, these are conniption type things. You say it's simple? Yes. Because all is already proven. What do you mean? Your situation's already proven. You're lost. You're hopeless. You're without God. You're an outcast. You don't belong to Him. You're not a part of the family. It's proven. That's truth. But hang on. All is not just proven. All has been paid. Hallelujah to God. He paid a death. He did not owe. Why? Because I owed a death. I could not pay. I needed someone to wash my sins away. And Jesus paid that debt. Hallelujah to God. Romans 3, or 6, verse number 23, the wages of sin is death. You want to work your way to heaven? You want to work your way to heaven? Then here's your sentence. The wages of sin is death. In other words, your work, the payment you're going to get, is death. Huh. Oh my. But I'm glad it doesn't stop there. I'm glad it says, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know what he's saying? He's just simply saying, here it is all wrapped up in a bow. It's all yours. All you got to do is just simply take it. And as many as received him, to them, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. I believed. I believed. I got in. Just that simple. It's been proven your guilt and the price has been paid. Hey man, then not just the fact that it's proven, it's been paid, but watch this. I really like this. It's already been provided for. <laughs> well, how do I do this? Well, Ephesians chapter number 2, verse 8 and 9 says this. For by grace. <laughs> oh, I love that. For by grace are you saved. Through, come on, help me. But through faith, that not of yourself, it's a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. That's what your Bible says. If your Bible doesn't say that, you've got a Bible that's wrong this morning. I'm here to tell you, it's by grace, through faith. And that grace only God can give. That faith only God can give. Well, if I can just muster up enough faith, you can't do it. But let God give you the faith and you can experience the wonderful grace of God. Hey Amen. Hey Amen. You say, what are you getting all excited about? This simple truth. I know, but isn't it so profound? Isn't it so profound that God, the God of glory, would save and reach down for someone like I? Woo! Hallelujah! Today, you must sense the urgency. You must see the simplicity and get saved. Well, grace, faith, repent, and God gives mercy. I don't have time. No, no, I'm going to fight it. Oh, man. No, I'm not either. What's this thing about grace all about? That means I get everything that I don't deserve. Well, what's this thing about mercy? It means everything that I do deserve, He already got it. <laughs> He got everything that I deserve and I go, oh, 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 I get everything that He deserves. Grace! Grace! Omnipotent grace on your part and mine. Such mercy withholding the payment that is due me. And it's due you. I'm saying, are you ready? Number two, that's in your text. Number two, we must strive uh -oh, to be holy and godly. Look at your text. Before you get mad at me, go ahead and look at the Bible. Look what it says in verse number 11. 
on the end it says what manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness you know what that means God bought you for something preacher said it right this morning he didn't buy you for you he bought you for himself so that he could use you to bring honor and glory to him this life is not about your likes your whims your wants your wishes it's about Jesus Christ his want his whims his wishes for your life and for my life be holy oh I'm telling you Oh, we start getting a little uncomfortable when a preacher mentions that word holy. Oh, boy, what's he going to say? Well, everything you're trying to think and make excuse for now, I'd go ahead and chuck it. Didn't you say, if in doubt, don't? Then if it's in doubt in your life, come on. I'd just chuck it. I'd say, God, I want to be holy. I'm not talking about full of hoes so everybody can look at me and say he's not. I'm talking about holy as in pure, as in righteous. Well, preacher, I can't be holy. I can't be godly. Oh, yes, you can. Because he's given you a new heart. And he, oh, oh, you brought it up. He, he's clothed you in his righteousness. You're walking about with holy righteousness on you. Get rid of that junk from the world. Quit being a person full of alloy. Be holy. Well, is that really something important? Hebrews chapter number 12, you can look at it yourself. Verse number 13, I believe it is. God says, pursue peace with all men and holiness. Can I tell you the most forsaken uh, 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 doctrine today in our world in Baptist realms is holiness. I had a man in a church that I pastored. He was supposed to be a saved man. And that man would go to work on Monday. On Sunday, he was a church teacher in a Sunday school class. On Monday, he was a boss, so he'd get his employees together and he would cuss them out. Though some of those men, one of his own, his own son, come to me and said, Preacher, I don't know what to do about this. And he began to tell me and it shocked me. So I confronted the man. And here's what he said. Well, preacher, I have a sacred walk and I have a secular walk. Puke. Oh my, that's bad language in the pulpit. But I'm here to tell you that makes God sick. Oh no, there's no such thing as a sacred and a secular walk. When you've been born again, it's all supposed to be sacred, holy, godly. Now, uh, some of you are to amen. And if you just go ahead and at least smile and nod your head, I'll move on. If you're scared to death, I'm going to get pointed on these things. I'm just going to tell you, your preacher, that's his business. I won't, I won't tend to his business. But I'm here to tell you, in this day and time, as we're living below and we're looking above, God expects holiness. Amen. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear. Amen. Well, me and God come to an understanding. <laughs> it's not the God that I came to understand. Because here's how we came to understanding. God said, I said it. That settles it. Now somebody put a little tag on there and said, God said it. That's, uh, I, God said it. I believe it. That's, uh, oh, no, 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 no. Whether you believe it or you don't, God said it. And that settles it for you. He said, be holy as I am holy. Now I'm going to move on. Move on because i got a, just something else I want to cover real good. So we must strive to be holy and godly. But we must maintain our testimony. Look at verse 14. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that you look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of Him in peace, without spot, and blameless. Now, hang on. <coughs> I don't know who did that, but thank you. Somebody got a 
white piece of paper over there is driving me insane. I'm one of them kind of guys, what do you call that? Everything just got to be, what? Yeah, ADHD, whatever you want to call it. I sure don't have a PhD, that's for sure. What was I talking about before I was rudely interrupted? I was talking about the fact of maintaining our testimony. And what was I saying? You, you, what's that? Huh? Blameless. And, and here, here's what God is saying. God is saying this. It's not important. Will you listen to me? It's not important what people have to say about you. It's important what I got to say about you. Can, can I remind you that everything He said in His Word is true? Stay with me now. It's about to get real good. Everything He says in His Word is true. And He said you better maintain your testimony that you may be found in Him. Boy, I'm telling you, we can put on the dog to everybody. But God sees us out behind the barn. I went in a boy's home. It was Satan called to preach there. And I'm telling you, at a boy's home you find out that guys can sure talk one way in church and different behind the barn. We're supposed to maintain our testimony. Are you all right? Yeah. Are we all right out there? Yeah. I, I didn't. I didn't step my toe too hard, did I? I'm talking about being holy and godly. I'm talking about maintaining our testimony. We're living below, but we're looking above. Really, the truth of the matter is, we ought to be looking uh, rather than just living below. We ought to also be looking below. We ought to be not having eyes that are set in this world far above this world. Amen. I'm trying to hurry. If you won't bring up things, I'll finish this thing. Maintain our testament. Watch this. And we need to be steady. See, this world is wanting to knock you off course. You said it a little while ago. It's wanting to knock you off course. And in verse number 17, look what he says. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also, being led away with error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. He said, you better be steady. You better be steady. How am I going to be steady? By living below and looking above. Now, as I started this message, and I'm done, I just... A little bit more to give you. I told you that Peter brings to our attention three truths. One, perilous days that are crushing. Two, the, that payday is certain. It's a coming. But oh, beloved, I want you to understand that He also sets for, before us that the Prince of Glory is a coming. Uh, we're going to appear before Him. He's a coming. I said hallelujah. He's a coming. He's a coming. He's a coming. What you so excited about? Because He's a coming. Oh, listen to the lyrics of this song. The sky shall unfold, preparing His entrance. The stars shall applaud Him with thunder. Thunderous, uh, thunders of praise. The sweet light in his eyes shall enhance those awaiting, and we shall behold him then face to face. Oh, we shall behold him. We shall behold him face to face in all his glory. Oh, we shall behold him. Yes, we shall behold him face to face. Our Savior and Lord. Listen, the angel will sound the shout of his coming and the sleeping shall rise from their slumbering place. Oh, Grandpa's going to get up. Oh, Brother Fred Vaught, he's going to get up. Oh, Brother Jerry McDonald, he's going to get up. You have friends that are going to get up. Those slumbering graves, they're going to get up. They're going to get up. Now watch this. The slumbering, uh, the, the sleeping shall rise from their slumbering place. And those that remain shall whew, be changed in a moment. And we shall behold Him then face to face. I'm here to say, sir, ma'am, I'm trying to stir up your pure mind by way of remembrance. Beloved, the Prince of Glory, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Lamb of God, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, the Amen, the Faithful, the True Witness, the Rose of Sharon, the Altogether Lovely, our Savior, our Friend, our Priest, our Refuge, He who is wonderful, 
Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, the Ancient of Days, the Son of God, the Son of Man, my Advocate, my Interceder, the Emmanuel, the Word, the Lord, our Righteousness, the Christ, He is coming! I'm living by hollow, but I'm looking above. I know He's coming again. He's coming. He's coming. Hallelujah to God. He's coming. So I got a question for you. Are you ready for Him to come? Are you holy in the light of His coming? Are you steady? in the lieu of the fact that He's coming. Are you maintaining your testimony with the fact that He is coming again? I had a bunch of Scripture. Oh, man. I'm telling you, I'm so excited I don't know what to do myself. John chapter number 14. He said, I'm going away to the Father's house. If I go away, I'm coming again. And I'll receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. Oh, I'm living below, but I'm a looking above. Oh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. He says this, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in the twinkling of an eye. He said this mortal shall put, shall put on immortality. This corruption shall put on incorruption. I'm here to say, beloved, one day this old flesh, I'll drop. I'm going to rise. And hallelujah to God, there won't be no more corruption with this old boy. I'm reminded of 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4. He said, I'd rather you not be ignorant. Our beloved, I, I would not have you to be ignorant concerning them which are asleep. He said, I want you to understand that the trump of God's going to sound. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we... <laughs> Someone said that's the Baptist. Then we, the dead, shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. I won't stand beside another graveyard or another grave. I won't stand beside another casket. Oh no, no, I'm saying he's coming again. Revelation chapter number four. He said, I looked. And hello, uh, a door was opened in heaven. And a voice that said, Come up. I'm a looking for the upper taker. I'm not looking for the undertaker. I'm looking for a plain air ride, not an airplane ride. I'm looking to leave this world. I said, It's a truth. And I lie not. Jesus is coming again. So, how you doing? In the low of the fact. See, back in the day, I just this knee hide a grasshopper. Here's what the preacher did. I'm done, preacher. Here's what the preacher did. They preached on the imminent return of Christ. You know what that means, imminent? That means any moment. Jesus. But you know what we've done? We've fallen back on our seat. And Peter says, I want to stir up your mind. I want to shake you. I want to help you understand. He's still coming again. He's coming after you. And my, 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 as we're living below, let's keep looking above. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.